Welcome to Jason Explains Things. Come along with us as we adventure our off-road rigs that we built ourselves from the Washington, Oregon border all the way towards Canada along the Washington backcountry discovery route. There will be awesome trucks, tomfoolery, majestic mountains, silly challenges, and friendship. Cue the royalty-free adventure music because adventure is out there. Ha! The Washington Backcountry Discovery Route, or WABDER for short, is a mostly off-road route from Oregon to the Canadian border. Total distance is nearly 600 miles. The route is split into six distinct sections to make trip planning more manageable. This is a journey my friends Chris, Nate, and I have done small portions of, but have wanted to conquer for years. With fall right around the corner, the time was now, or wait another year. So we loaded up our vehicle, Sarge, my Toyota Tacoma, Appa, Chris's Chevy Colorado ZR2 Bison, and Nate's Jeep Wrangler AEV JL370. After a scenic highway drive, we made it to the official starting point of Section 1, the Bridge of the Gods in Stevenson, Washington. Nate, uh, what, what are we about to do? We are about to cross the Bridge of the Gods, and uh, it's like normal government procedures, they will charge us money to do so. That's so thoughtful of them. There you go. Thank you. Hey for Chris. We'll cross together. As a team. As a team, Nate. This is actually kind of wild. That's uh, it's just nothing but grates. So you just feed down to the water. When was this bridge built, Chris? You're a history expert. This bridge was built by uh, Zedediah God in 1732. Anything with enough confidence, people will believe it. <laughs> for good luck. My daughter Marley loaned me her Sasquatch, so I'm gonna have this in the background the entire time. In the name of science and bragging rights, we decided to do a series of challenges during our journey. Challenge one, who has the best gas mileage during section one? This is probably gonna be the first fill up of uh, many on this trip. Yes. 529. We're giving California a run for its money, Nate. Yeah, Washington State represent. Us. We're gonna have the bestest of roads, is what we're gonna get. I'm sure. Guys, 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 it may be expensive, but at least it has Tecron, which is a channel sponsor. Yay, Tecron! We went to Chevron with Tecron, right? You gotta fill up your truck. Always fill up. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna pay awful prices, at least get really good gas with Tecron in it. Right? Well, it's gonna have more. Thanks, Techron, for sponsoring Jason Explains Things. I actually really do appreciate it. It's the only sponsor I have. <laughs> so everyone's filling up. We're doing the TFL thing where you fill up after 30 seconds or something. I don't know. Uh, shout out to Andre. <laughs> hey. It's, uh, it's good. I wanted to start all these challenges in a deficit. This is my handicap, and I'm going to work my way up from here. Has anyone here done section one before? Because I have not. We also have not. I uh, never have either. Let's blindly follow our phones into the wilderness. Let's go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have just hit dirt. Woohoo! Section one is roughly 130 miles long, traveling from Stevenson to Packwood, Washington. It's comprised of gravel and paved forest roads. No obstacles to speak of here. If done in the summer, this area is passable in any vehicle. Challenging terrain would have to come later, but we still enjoyed the beautiful views. Um, we're looking for a nice wide spot to uh, take a break. We're gonna do a bit of a driver's meeting, then we'll, uh, we'll get some lunch. It's nice to not be at my desk. We'll say that. All right, stop one on section one. Let's eat some lunch. Made it myself. What a fancy table you have there, Nate. Oh, it's only the fanciest. You know, they make your uh, nice uh, salad with nice uh, yeah. uh, cut up. Uh, yeah, oh, we must see the bamboo. If I need to, we'll say cut a nice uh, 
47 pandas starved to death in order to have this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Michael, I don't think we caught on camera what just happened to no, you. No, I just wanted to eat my tuna fish. Uh, well, I've been out of the vehicle for about, what, two minutes? And I stepped in poop. It was probably I stepped human. in poop real it was, bad. It was human poop too, Could, right? No, it better not have been. I think it was human poop. I don't think it was, it was right next poop. to that sock over I think it was there. dog poop. I think it was human poop. No way. I think it was probably human poop. <laughs> Comment below if you no, think it was human or dog know. poop. It not... <laughs> it'll, it'll be better for my head if it wasn't human no, poop. <laughs> so I'm choosing to believe it was not human. No! No! <laughs> so far we accomplished from Carson all the way to about there in 1831. Stop at the Gullar Ice Caves and check that out. I'm not sure how big it is or how long we're going to spend there. Maybe in that area we'll air down, but so far it's uh, smooth sailing. Okay, sounds good. The whole world just wants you to avoid that puddle, Nate. I just want you to know, uh, know that. Hey, we hit pavement again. Oh! We didn't air down, <laughs> This is just, uh, this is like a nice, this like country cruise. Like, some of the things we're kind of surprised about in this trail is uh, basically how much we're darting between Forest Service roads and actually uh, paved roads. I was about to say, uh, I think we found where we might want to air, air down and then it got smooth again. <laughs> it's definitely keeping us guessing so far. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I was looking next to the road. Uh, that road to this one. Well, how many miles have you guys would guess that we've uh, driven since uh, uh, we got fuel? Let's say the 22. Ah, man, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I'm going to guess 39.7 miles. Uh, Chris, do you have a good guess? Judging by that specific response, I'm gonna guess. Uh, wait for it. Uh, 39.8 miles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how, how close are we, mate? Yeah, that's right. That's, uh, that's right. <laughs> All right, a short diversion for some ice caves we're gonna check out. What do we got going on, guys? Ice caves. Oh. Yeah, we're talking caves. about a military expedition to make a railroad across this area, which. There's no railroad, so <laughs> looks like it failed. <laughs> the Indian guide obtained snow from the cavity in this field. Okay, George. It's somewhere. Where's the cave? It's somewhere. There's no signs. I don't know where to go. Where's the cave? Said, well, cave, you are here. Like, why was that? It's quarter? a bad quote. Was, yeah. Nothing you know, else you know, like that that made The Indian guide went down there and got snow. I mean, it's not on. I didn't download the ice What's, cave. Now. You didn't download the ice I cave? I, I failed you all. Yeah, just gotta zoom in. Oh, farther? Enhance. 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 <laughs> so where are we? Oh, uh, that's, that's, that's where the tree, oh, that's the tree. Oof, amateurs, <laughs> wow. Do a sweet jump. <laughs> Take it off a sweet jump. <laughs> yeah! Whoa! <laughs> hey! I lose this challenge. <laughs> oh, not very cool. I think the ice caves are this way. Good thing we didn't so, go, we go come from that way. way. So, been before. You know, we, we came could, from over there. We could edit this. So people were like, oh, okay, now they know where they're going. The best part about the fact that we walked the wrong way is that we get to do sweet jumps again. <laughs> Guys, we parked there and the ice caves are right there. <laughs> I get to clean my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeepers, guys, I hope there's not ghosts. <laughs> Up there, it is 75 degrees. Down here, it is not. Down here, it is less. <laughs> <laughs> It is officially not. Hey Chris, you like how my flashlight does this? Oh, nothing will fall on our heads. That's, that's intense. I'm good. You can continue if you'd like. I want to just I want to get a shot of it. This is really cool, you guys. Oh yeah, there are bats. Oh, there's bats. Just bats. <laughs> How's it gonna be bats shit on the ceiling? They're bats. Gravity has no effect in the ice caves. You think you've never seen a bad shit? It's a lot of force. So it shits upside down. Yeah, it does. What else would it be, mate? Nothing else is ever going to fall. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that one. Well, if you guys end up doing section one of the Wobder, I definitely recommend checking out the ice cave. It is worth the extra 20 minutes. Another challenge we had going is who has the least common vehicle on the trail? The Tacoma might not win this one. That's one for Jace. We just passed another Tacoma. Nate, the ice caves were awesome, but where are we gonna camp? What is our goal for, for day one? Uh, so for a goal for day one is somewhere north of this. That's basically all we're really hoping for. We're gonna try to check out uh, two campsites that I've kind of pre-marked out. Um, and hopefully those uh, 
that'll work out for us. So we have discovered an actual campground. This is not what I was expecting on the BDR. It's a very nice campground. <laughs> we're uh, trying to figure out if we're going to camp here and be schmucks or if we're uh, going to go somewhere else. What's the matter? You okay? Where, where I'm going, you cannot follow. <laughs> I, I need to, but I can't. That's so weird. What's the matter? I. I oh, jeez. I don't know. <laughs> it's too much cheese. <laughs> cheese is so good. So is that two? That's two. That's, That's two, two points. Them. Yep. Not. Nah, I'm out of the hole. That makes me happy. Luckily, we didn't settle for the campground. A few short miles down the trail, we found a beautiful spot just a short walk from an alpine lake. What's for dinner, Chris? Bison burgers. Bison burgers. And I, I we have barbecue baked beans. What? We got veggies, I got lettuce and tomatoes, pre-cut, pre-sliced brioche buns, and cheese. They're not as big as your head, but don't worry. <laughs> I promised my wife that I would show these off when I put them on this morning. So I, I've been adventuring all day with my Lord of the Rings socks. Just so you guys know. <laughs> this is the Frodo leg. This is the Sam leg. Okay. So by the end of this, your right leg is going to be carrying your left leg? <laughs> I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> It'll be fine, Nate. The pain in my life. <laughs> it's I see, I've seen too much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Or ju just gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> we are embarking on day two of the Washington BDR. We are heading to Packwood, as discussed in the driver's meeting this morning. What is our uh, end goal for today? I think we're trying to uh, camp on Bethel Ridge, or are we thinking we go farther? So my thoughts are on uh, we're going to camp at tonight. It's going to be really dependent on how fast we move across this uh, terrain. Awesome, gentlemen. Since this road is a little bit boring, let's just uh, cruise. Oh, Tacoma. And we already saw that Tacoma, so that one doesn't count for another time. Tacoma. No, that one is the same one as before. It doesn't count. I don't know if we can confirm that is the same Tacoma. It was the same one, I, I swear. I swear it. Okay, Jason, because there's no possibility that there's going to be two Tacomas, two black extended cab Tacomas out in the woods. They made thousands of those. Actually, uh, the Toyota Tacoma is extremely rare. So just running tally at the moment, that is one point for Chris, three points for Jason, and nothing yet for Nate. I don't know why. Uh, well, we have theories on why there are no Jeeps on the trail, but nothing confirmed. Yeah, as I said earlier off camera, I believe that it's a little late in the season for Jeeps to still be running at this point. That's, that's, that's wrong. Section one was in the books. Time to find out who has the best gas mileage. Chris, how do you like your chances? Uh, I like my, my chances of using the most. I like them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Nate. Oh, I'm starting. I think, so, I think this is down to pretty much you and me. Is it going to be all, about all the same, or is it going to be drastically one in one's favor? I don't know. We're going to find out. Or we're going to do the, the 30 second thing. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we'll do one more top off. 8.04. Done. I did it. <laughs> oh! What is it? I gotta do, I gotta top it off. Yeah, you gotta do the... I gotta top it off. Yes! <laughs> yes! Fuel efficient. Wait, there's way more. There's oh, way. oh, whatever. Whatever, get out of here. Oh, that's a bunch of, now it's gonna spill out. What, I win. High score. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, uh, score I, one for, for Jason. Section two is 122 miles long, ending in Ellensburg, Washington. Unlike section one, you're going to actually need four-wheel drive and good ground clearance in this area. Huge ruts and mud holes are possible depending on the time of year. In short, this is where things get really fun. We started out from Packwood, heading east on Highway 12. Just past Rimrock Lake, we hit dirt again on Forest Road 1500, which leads to Bethel Ridge. 
Oh no! Oh, I thought it was a drink. I wish it was a drink. Remember when I said everything was fine? Yeah. Oh, dude. Does it still work? A replacement screen is uh, $283 and it's been ordered. Gracious. Oh. This is the camera you were gonna take to the service. Chevy. It I do is. have service. I have one bar, and I've ordered it on eBay. So nice. We're on your nose. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna focus on the thing. Oh, oh my gosh, the touchscreen still works. Nice. Well, now that I've broken part of my camera and we've aired down, let's go. That way. Yay! I'm in a good mood. Yippee! <laughs> Holy crap! Do you guys think I need a snorkel? Comment below if you think I should get a snorkel or not. The kind of interesting uh, thing about Bethel Ridge is there's two different paths you can take. Uh, we're going to take the harder of the two paths, of course. There's the easier side of it, which is more like Area 1, where it's going to be a lot of gravel roads. And then there's the harder side, like uh, we're going to be doing. And then you, the harder side also has the typical Bethel Ridge overlook. Mount Adams is right there. Mount Rainier is right over there. We have an awesome place picked out for lunch. Only thing that's a little bit of a bummer coming over here is just how different it looks after that fire uh, two years ago, right? Yeah, it was two years ago now. This is tight through here with all the dead scrub now. Where we went camping. That's right. And now it's all gone. Yeah, you'll have to come back to early 2021 and this looked very, very different. It's kind of sad, but you know what? At least it's all still here and it is coming back to life slowly, cut to a shot of a little tree growing amongst the devastation. We just passed that campsite. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> You're definitely risking your paint job coming over here. <laughs> but it's worth it. It's a really cool spot, and I, I want to eat my sandwich in a really cool spot, so. A good test of ground clearance there, Chris. Should be great. That was all two-wheel drive? No, I switched into all-wheel drive. Oh, it's yep. like, wow, okay. No. <laughs> no, I cheated. And now we get to do the, a pretty cool little climb. If I do say so myself, this part's kind of fun. All right, here I go. I, uh, I'm gonna say something slightly controversial. I think you can already tell where I'm going with this. This is the best driving snack of all time. But Cinnabears, bar none, it's, it, they're the goat. So pretty, that's cool. So far so good on with the set power too. It's obviously not getting a very cushy ride today, but it's working great. We had an awesome lunch at this lookout spot just off the Wobder in section two, but we gotta head back, see how far we get today. Also, we're gonna check out part of the trail here up at Bethel Ridge. That was a lot, I'm imagining, is gonna be a lot easier today than the last time we were up here because the last time we were up here was the first time I got to use my winch on my Tacoma. <laughs> It's, it's, it's awesome to be on a trip like this, have fun with friends, be out in nature, and also just kind of enjoy the, the fruits of your labor with uh, all the projects and videos we've done on this truck to date. It's, it's so cool. I mean, and same thing for the trucks behind me. I mean, obviously Chris's truck is essentially built minus a couple little things we might do. And then Nate, uh, he pretty much, <laughs> he got his Jeep. Um, pretty much, you know, built out by AEV, but we've, you know, we added a winch recently. We did a video about that. And now we're just get to keep, you know, enjoy what we've done so far and then look towards what else is to come. So are we at the spot where we all got stuck the last time? Uh, that's correct. But uh, the one thing you're not correct about, we, we all didn't get stuck. Only, uh, only a couple people. <laughs> Correction. 
the place where I got stuck, Nate didn't get stuck, and Chris uh, pinched his cap. I got points for flair, I'm just saying. Yeah, let me hop up there real quick. Sometimes I drink water a little too aggressively. <laughs> Self steering, huh? Yeah, yeah. So the grooves, the rotor, can actually correct the steering wheel. Wait, maybe not anymore. That's going on. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the good thing about your brother driving it in the same spot is the damage has already been done. Oh, and the tent goes wild. And nice go. And slow. Nice and slow. We don't want to do it again. Oh. oh. He's a better driver than me. Yeah. You know how to use this? Wait, Wait no. Get away from me. Get, yeah. get away. What's this part? <laughs> Why is all the lights I'm on? Gonna I'm gonna <laughs> move. <laughs> I'm gonna move. Riding the ridge, baby. Last time I did this, I was in the ruts. And I made it out, but I was dragging my belly the whole time. And at least it was muddy, so it just slid down. Today, the ground is harder, so I'm not gonna do that. Michael, well done on that section. Thank you. That was very good. Yeah. I'm surprised with the clearance. Those are deep ruts. She did well? She did well for you? Yeah, good, good. It's about no, being tall. Be no, I'll be no, short, no. I'll be the shortest, it's fine. Well, uh, that's probably the most interesting parts of Bethel Ridge, right? So I think yeah. we're, we're cruising from here. We're gonna make yeah. time from here. We gotta get to Canada as close as we can. Canada, Canada or bus. Nate, you have a point against you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> You're still winning though. What are you doing, Chris? I'm flying. I don't know. How. <laughs> I'm in space. <laughs> space man, here she comes. Here she comes. <laughs> Stay away from that thing. <laughs> Racing speed, boys. <laughs> this is this is intense. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I found you. As we finished traversing Bethel Ridge, it was time to find a place to camp. We descended into the Nile Valley near Natchez, Washington. Shut up, Nate! I'm trying to get the turkeys on camera! What's up, turkeys? After a brief chat, we made our plans for camp and a fancy dinner. I didn't know that, uh, that Nate wanted to take us all to uh, Whistling Jack Lodge for dinner. It's pretty romantic. It's a romantic place. Come on, come on, Michael. Cheers. Cheers. Adventure is out there. Yeah, the beer drinking challenge. <laughs> That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Bacon and ham? I didn't know that. Yep. I didn't really read the script either. <laughs> you did it. That's a full bite, right? Okay, we're tied. We're tied for the burger challenge. Right? I feel, it feels right. It fits well. can't do anything other but it feels right that it can't be I can't, wrong. yeah, the whole rest of the... <laughs> hey, Jason. Uh, I'm declaring a new challenge tonight. Alright, let's do we, it. We just set up camp. Yep. Almost. It's There's beautiful. one critical piece missing. Yes. That is camp chairs. I carry the best type of camp that's, chair. That's yet to be seen, hence the challenge, Jason. Challenge accepted! <laughs> I got gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Yeah. I accept your challenge. Right, I'm gonna set mine up. You're gonna set yours up. We'll see what the others think. Huh? Let's huh? do it. Huh? Let's All do right. it. So I'm up first, it looks like. Yes. I brought this. Okay. And that's not a chair, you say. <laughs> Wait. Wow. I'm the director here. <laughs> I'm gonna put myself on fire. What do you got? Okay. This, Chris, this, Christopher <laughs> Smith and others is the GCI Outdoor Road Trip Rocker. A hydraulic camping, rocking camp chair with, with shocks on the back and cup holders on either side, on one side. 
Oh, squeaks, free Makes squeaks. Makes a light squeak sound, which is very nice. Helps you know you're alive. Yes. Uh, Michael. Uh, Nate. <laughs> it's simple, it's the front runner chair. You got a caught in the middle here. Are you? Yeah. Why? Because I own one of those. Well, where is it? At home, because you told me not to bring it. I didn't. And it's the best. It's I'm not going to bite the hand that feeds. So I only get two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a vote. Uh, I. Uh, that was like a half eye on that one. Did you say I, Jason? I feel like you said I. No. Oh. No? No. No. G G C I. Old man it's rocker. It's never been better to be squeaking. To be wrong, I guess. <laughs> this is losing. Don't call me a winner. <laughs> you have to guess. It echoes through the forest. What? So based on the results of the challenge, you only had one vote for your own chair, and then we had two and basically a half for the front runner chairs. Yeah. So that means Chris and I have won one challenge each? No. Or half a challenge? I have won one challenge. Yes, you won one challenge. I have lost one but, challenge. But Chris and I have basically won one challenge as well. We won the chair challenge because oh. we have the same chair. You sh okay, you That's both get a works. half. You can't both win. You but you can't both win a challenge, so you both get a half. So we get a half point? You get a half point. That might be the deal breaker at the end of this Fine. whole event. Great. I'm still ahead. All right, it's a new day. You're joining us already on the move. We packed up early because we want to uh, have a little bit of extra time to get some breakfast at Gold Creek, uh, which is kind of, uh, where are we, north of Cliffdale? Little Natchez River's where we uh, camp next to, and it was just, it was, I slept fantastic. I'm hungry. Let's go eat. Let's go eat. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm busy now, go away. After breakfast, we helped a carpenter move some large planks that he was working on. Sweet. Then it was back onto the BDR to finish up section two. We're starting on a pretty good time. Right now it's uh, about 20 minutes after nine. I was expected to be at the trailhead about nine o'clock. So you can say we're roughly 20 minutes behind. Just have to kind of make it up a little bit. As we wrap up section two and head into section three today, you can really, this is gonna give you all a really good taste of like the diversity of terrain you get here in central Washington. I, I, everyone loves western Washington. People crap on central Washington and eastern Washington. They're all wrong. We have greenery here in central Washington, gosh darn it. We have deserts, we have lakes, we have rivers, and a little more elbow room at the same time. It's cool. I was just going to say we're going to turn on the Bald Mountain Road. We're going to turn on Bald Mountain Road. That's all, which I'm very familiar with. I was just going <laughs> to leave it at that. Yeah, uh huh. Let the dust begin. Dusting operations. Hey, Chris, thanks for turning on your chase lights. Yeah, those uh, those chase lights, it's, it's, uh, it's a lifesaver. It's just kind of, it's like a little, like, this, go this way. So did Chris uh, make you poop your pants? Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, we definitely won the get down the mountain challenge. Oh. You're nuts. And the tent's still sturdy. I, it's still good. Butter. That's what I was worried about. That was fun. That's my favorite part. You know this. So now we just uh, entered onto LT Murray, some uh, state forest land. Actually named after a guy named uh, LT Murray. It's in the first two initials, his last name is Murray. He donated or sold the land to the state. Somehow he got his name branded on the state land ever since. Is, uh, now we're wet from all the pine trees and the, uh, the stereotypical Pacific Northwest look to a high desert. It seems like when you're out here uh, uh, at the LT, you're experiencing one of two things. Dust, like we have right now, or copious, copious amounts of mud. Very true. Very, very true. Well, all of this dust 
got me thinking of an exciting new challenge for all of us to compete in once we reach the famous top of the hill here with all the radio towers. What kind of challenge do you have in mind? I'm up for a challenge. I don't know. We'll have to filter a couple of uh, ideas or thoughts. Or that was thoughts. so bad. It, it's got air, air, it, air that filters. So it's got air bad. filters. He'll cut it. He's not brave enough to put that in the cut. My friends, a really important part of, of off-roading is you have to be able to access and check your air, air filter, sometimes clean it uh, sure. as quickly as possible while on the trail. And with all this dust, guys, I think it's time that we all check our air filters and time who can do it the fastest. Three, two, one, go! Time's running. So this is the advantage of the Jeep. You don't have to go in the vehicle engine or to... Uh, it's true. Of course, you always travel with your, your tools in your back pocket of for course. this. I always do. I, yeah. I have everything I need to get my air filter out on me. Do you? Yeah. Speed filter changes. But sometimes they say, you know, you gotta make sure your air box is fully sealed. Time's running, Nate. 39 seconds. He's cooking. I like this. There it is. There it oh. is. There oh. it is. Should. Do you have to disconnect your mass airflow sensor? I don't care. <laughs> you have to disconnect your mass airflow What? I mean, it makes it easier, strangely. Oh! 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 Pull oh. oh. it! Pull it, mate! 116. 116. 116. Okay. I was like, how did you add a whole minute to it? All right, let's, to let's take a look. How, oh, it's it's pretty, you know. It's got, it's got some dust in there. It's a little dirty. Three, two, one, go! Oh, he's at a clear disadvantage. Having to go inside the engine <laughs> yeah, but look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. What do you got to do? No props. Hydraulics. Oh, oh that is a, that, is, that is that is good. That is good. What I don't are you have doing that. There? Hush. Which Over to a Phillips because I'm an American. Get out of here with that metric stuff. <laughs> That's gonna round out. Gonna round <laughs> don't round strip it. Don't strip it. I won't strip it. And I don't have to pull these. Thirty seconds. Just sit in there. All right, I Thirty got seconds. Thirty-five seconds. Shut up. Shut up, some of us are working. Ooh, what turn the lights on. What, what button is it's that? Just, it's just this. Ooh, I helped. I, don't I have helped, those. Chris. Come on, Chris. It's not looking good. 50 Shh. seconds. Shh. Oh. 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 oh, we're running out of time! We're running out of time! And, 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 and. oh! 115! Oh. Dude, it's uh, it's a, it's not too spicy Just, actually. Uh, tap it on your leg. Should I tap it? Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. I trip. I trip. <laughs> oh, it's so heavy. The head. Oh yeah, you look. You look like this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 You don't what? need any tools. What just happened? Wait, you guys need tools? It wasn't tools? locked. It was you locked. You lifted it right up. No! There's one latch. There's oh. two latches, one on each side. That's oh. all you need to do. They probably were on latch because we hit so many bumps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how cool it is. How many seconds was that? 17. 17 seconds. <laughs> 17 seconds. I did I might. I think I won. Our adventure along the Washington backcountry discovery route continued as we pulled into Ellensburg, Washington to fuel up and get supplies. Good to go? <laughs> nice. Next. I think I might wash a window or two. Huh? <laughs> that looks good. This is definitely a trial by fire for this uh, set power fridge but nice and cold in there. All right, we've resupplied, so it's time to hit the road again. Now, we are going to stuff I have not done before. So, back to new experiences. How gross do I look? Eh, not too bad. Section three of the Wobder is 77 miles long, traveling from Ellensburg to Kashmir, Washington. We were in for a treat, because these are some of the most beautiful trails I've experienced in my life. The route is made up of twisty dirt roads, including a few technical and nerve-wracking washouts. 
and bring a saw with you. Judging by all the cut logs, you'll likely need one, especially earlier in the year. Views from peaks like Lion Rock and the descent into Beehive Reservoir are incredible. Got resupply in Ellensburg with fuel and uh, Starbucks. So now we're uh, running up uh, Research Creek. Uh, these uh, switchbacks are going on now. And it's mostly pavement. Uh, I think that's where all our gas tax is going. It's actually to pave unnecessary roads. Well, as long as, as, as long as something's being done, that's, that's cool. Well, at least I won't spill my Starbucks this way, Nate. Oh, I know, it's the smoothest of smooth rides right now. Chris, can you describe uh, for the viewers your uh, your Starbucks? Uh, and, and what it tastes like and how it feels like. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, I got a uh, venti cold brew. Hard to describe. Um, you gotta give me one. Well, gentlemen, I got a venti iced mocha. I always throw an extra shot in it, and then I ask for uh, no whipped cream. Overlanding, am I right? So this... Uh, Grade of uh, coming up to the Lions Rock, and now there's a cow in the middle of the road. Yes! Get out of the way, cow. We right got now. cows! We got a grade of actually quite long and uh, uh, I gotta go, we got cows. Yeah, the last time I drove this, we got some uh, kind of hotter uh, transmission and engine temperatures because it's really just stressing the engine. You're gonna climb some elevation. Hi, cow! <laughs> yeah, this goes up fast. Jeepers. Good place to uh, air down. Yeah, we can air down right now. Awesome, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretty low. We got bead lockers, right? It is way hotter here than it is uh, first first few days. After hitting dirt, it wasn't too long before we made it to the Lion Rock viewpoint. Ooh, that's this is a beautiful view. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. This was a perfect time to stop take some photos, and break out the drone. Whoop! This would make an excellent spot to camp, but it was too early in the afternoon, so we continued on. So it looks like we're at uh, 6,100 feet, give or take. Uh, that's right. I'm Getting close to almost 6,200 feet, so maybe we'll get up there. So guys, how, uh, what do you think? When do, uh, it's about 4.30 right now. When do we want to camp? In about an hour? Pretty much. It's kind of whenever the mood strikes us. I'm down for farther. I'm like in the miles. Yeah, and my goal too would be to get out of this uh, previously burned area. Awesome. Sounds like a plan to me. As amazing as this drive was, we couldn't help but wish to explore this area before it burned. Sadly, lightning strikes sparked the Table Mountain Fire in September 2012, burning over 60 square miles. This reinforces how important it is to be responsible and follow burn bans when enjoying this beautiful landscape. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's not hard. You do real bad, you just you go over there. things where you just have to see it for yourself because I don't think we're gonna capture it again like all the hairs on the back of my neck are just standing up because this is just amazing but he's got to keep rubbing it in that he's got hair right you have hair on your neck on my... now that was easy but these next washouts were definitely uh, puckering moments look at the view out the window look at the freaking view out the window holy crap can I get a spotter I don't I'm, I'm uncomfortable I'm here. I'll uh, walk out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Whoa. Good job, dude. 
Coming down off that ridge was my high point for the entire trip. Surrounded by all the natural beauty, I was reminded how life is a gift. Leaning on others and gratitude for everything good got me through some pretty dark times. And I was just very thankful that evening while we looked for camp. I'll just say, somebody upstairs must like me. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it was a good day. It was great. We had some fun at the end. It there. was great. Ooh, night cooking. Oh, the Chipotle makes it. Nate, I, lo I, I love you. I love you because you made me this. So I love you now. Oh, okay. He's pretty. You're going to have to deal with it. You're going to have to deal with the fact that I love you now. He owes you a life debt. I owe you a life debt. Misa, your humble servant. <laughs> Misa, follow you. <laughs> Gentlemen, we are going to be taking a right here past the Beehive Reservoir. It is day three, four of our travels. I get messed it up again. Hey, that's really pretty. What do you guys have to say this morning? I slept very well. It was so quiet that the only sound I heard last night was the occasional rustling of a, of a, of a Nate Ham as his cot made creaking sounds. I, I survived, so that's why I keep doing it. Nate Ham, I survived. That's why I keep doing it. An autobiography. Wow, uh, where are we headed next? I'm just following the line, to be honest. No, I think we're doing a, a, a loop kind of around uh, Wenatchee towards Kashmir today. So we end section three and start section four. Uh, that's our plan. Um, I'm pretty sure today is gonna be another bunch of great views. So we should slow down and then take that opportunity to check it out. There's a cool uh, mountain peak uh, called Chumstick Mountain that would be uh, somebody with our vehicles. Kind of nice little lookouts. There used to be a fire watch tower up there at one time, but now I guess it's gone. I don't know if it burned or what happened. Well, I can't wait to check out Chumstick Mountain. That's one of those like names that I, I don't understand like where they came up with it. I can see like Dead Horse Pass. And you're like, okay, some, someone killed their horse there. Go figure. Um, but Chumstick, what, what does that mean? A lot of sharks up there. The remainder of Section 3 between Wenatchee and Kashmir is fun, but uneventful. The pavement near Wenatchee becomes established gravel roads with steep inclines and declines. Personal suggestion, make sure to use a combination of engine braking along with your brakes to keep them from overheating. Other than that, it was smooth sailing. Want some cheese? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you. Phil. You're welcome. Uh, so we'll get dinner. Uh, at the IJ there, and if you guys want to stop for lunch or something, just let me know, like, we'll, or we'll just okay. eat on the road. Three pills for Jason's back. Jason's back is a stupid back. We eat the pills so it hurts a little bit less. Ow. Kids, don't ever hurt your back. Don't do it. Don't hurt your back, it's not worth it. For the rest of your life, you have a back that's been hurt and then it get hurts, gets hurt again, and again, and again, and again, and then you just, you just have a poopy back, and it's always sassing you. Tacoma. It is a Tacoma. It's like a purplish uh, third gen, just like yours. Well, crap. I guess uh, I, am, I am in last place with four Tacomas, and then you guys are tied with one each, right? That is still the current number. That was a good uh, call on Michael. He uh, spotted that from the side of the road, though. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> You're welcome. We're almost there. We're gonna get some supplies, get some fuel, get some propane, because I am completely out of propane, because there's a burn ban, so that we're using a fire pit. It's just a beautiful day. We'd arrived at the start of section four of the Wobder, which connects Kashmir to Chelan, Washington. At 104 miles long, I'd say section four is the most consistently thrilling section of the entire trip with its intimidating switchbacks and expansive views. Highlights include summiting Chumstick Mountain, the winding path along Roaring Ridge in the Antioch Mountains, and the 4,000 foot climb up Mackenzie Ridge. I just, I have to give a special shout out to the IGA in Kashmir, Washington, because they had my favorite pig-shaped uh, sweetbread things. These are my, I, 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 I can't not eat those. Cream. Oh, oh no! 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 
It'll be fine. And this cool t-shirt with the, with the guy on a motorcycle. I'm gonna wear it. Now we're just north of Kashmir onto section four. And we're just gonna be climbing up to Chumstick Mountain now. It's a pretty good overlook. Well, hopefully we'll hit that right about noon so we can have lunch there. Woo-hoo! Woo! Woo-hoo! Woo-wee! <laughs> Woo-wee! Woo -wee. <laughs> yeah, and just since that last time we talked on our radio, we just kind of climbed a thousand feet of elevation. And we got probably another 3,000 more to the top of that peak. It's looking like we're about 15 degrees up. Drive down this in the ice and see what happens. Oh, oh. No thanks. <laughs> Did Jesus take the wheel? It's like driving up like a <laughs> ski resort. <laughs> Bye. I have a question for you, Michael. Is now that you've ridden in all three of these vehicles, can you compare the differences? Like uh, which ones are smoother or bouncier? Or... This one actually might sound the loudest. I can hear the motor of the Toyota a lot more. It's Yeah, that's partially the exhaust yeah. that I just did. It is kind of interesting because with the Bison, there's a rooftop tent. So right. you aren't going to be as aggressive on some of those little whoopty whoops. Yep. But definitely with you and with Nate, hitting those a lot more aggressively is kind right. of fun. Yeah. I, I, I had to kind of get used to, to doing that because I used to bottom out really, really easy before doing my suspension upgrades. Uh, but now it's, you know, like, I, I it, it has to be quite the whoop before, before yeah. anything bad happens. Woo! We are climbing, ladies and gentlemen. Holy biscuits. Yeah, Nate on the radio just said we've climbed uh, 4,000 feet so far. We're not done yet. Climb challenge. Go straight, go straight, go straight. <laughs> Roll your vehicle down the hill and die challenge. <laughs> Hello, YouTube people. Welcome to Nate Lifestyle. It's where I talk about lifestyle things about overlanding in your Jeep. Oh, that camera. I'm liking the view. The view is incredible. Yeah, yeah, this uh, this section here, you're gonna get all the views. Is that our trail up ahead, Nate? Did we get through that trail? Uh, no, that's, uh, I, I just looked at the map. I think that dotted line is supposed to be for, like, single track. That would be something. That would be, that would be interesting. <laughs> Mind over matter. Mind over matter. I declare a challenge! <laughs> oh, I want to do it. <laughs> oh, oh, I want to do it! When you're on an adventure, don't forget to take time and enjoy moments like this. As great as Chumstick Mountain was, the epic views of Section 4 were far from over. Uh, and then we're going to be following this trail all the way down into the big trees, uh, and then hopefully camp at Windy Camp uh, later today. It's a little sad to leave that spot. I like that spot. That was really cool. Look at that, it's insane. All right, dust time again. <laughs> oh, oh, Rolling my window. Rolling them up, roll them up. So you probably noticed in this video that I have my light bar on and my backup light on during the daylight. Just trying to get more light out there so people hopefully can you know, see me as we drive through these super dusty environments. 
So you want you want to drive you want to drive where it's flat. So if if, if that is close to the edge, then you need to be close to the edge. Um, because if you're starting to like drive up on the hill, that's where it's like this, and you're just gonna go that way. So just gotta be gotta be confident in stuff things, right? Let's get going. Good job, Nate. I don't believe in uh, reincarnation, but if I did. I would imagine that my 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 old self died from drowning and falling, kind of in some sort of combination. So we're shooting for five o'clock to get to a campsite. We're gonna do a little more filming along the way, and then Mike, it's Mike's turn to to make tacos. So uh, I made it yesterday. Everyone agreed they really loved it. So uh, they said we'll do the same thing. Good luck to you, Mike. You got some uh, a big challenge ahead of you to see if you can uh, top. My taco challenge. I'm not afraid. You're afraid. You're afraid to watch me be afraid. That's what I think. You're always judging. You're always watching and judging. Hey, Nate, how old is uh, Walter? Hmm. That's a good question. That's a good question. I heard about it for probably like five years. Hey, we're almost down on the ground. Well, I mean, we're on the ground, but like the ground ground. <laughs> Are we all of a sudden in like a, a neighborhood? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, it's a small city, township or whatever this is. Oh, I like it. Huh. Cool. Cool little town. After a very brief stretch of pavement, we hit dirt again on Mud Creek Road to start the climb up to the top of Mackenzie Ridge and eventually Baldy Mountain. So that crazy peak we see off to the distance, that's where we're going? That looks like the hill that we will be climbing. Be our final ascent, I think. Gotcha. Yeah, I I, uh, I noticed it. Fudge. That's kind of a shocker. Coming out of the tunnel, I was like, oh, wow, that's, a, that's more of a cliff than I was really expecting. I hope the GoPro on the roof is getting a good enough image of this but it's just like the sheer size of this uh, of this ridge in front of us is, is pretty impressive. We're pretty much on it now. We're, we're in it. We're in it, we're on it. And it's nice to not be on the switchbacks. We're taking a break from that for a little bit. That's nice. Because they were some gnarly ones for a little bit there. Uh, my goal was today was to get to Windy Point. Uh, but looking at the map, either somewhere between uh, Baldy Mountain to Windy Point, I think be either excellent choices for campsites. Awesome, yeah, today has been uh, very different than all the other days. You have to really pay attention today. Yeah, there was a lot, there's a lot more cliff roads that uh, we're driving alongside of. Um, a lot more hairpin turns, and probably the hairpin turn is most likely a cliff, so you gotta make sure to take the corner. Uh, that was an elevation of 6,100 feet, and we're kind of going back down a little bit. Awesome view of Lake Chelan. Check off to the right, don't drive that way. So I've had my uh, friendly uh, Sasquatch here uh, with me that my daughter lent me. With all of this land, I think the likelihood of Sasquatch existing is not 0%. Of course it's not. I mean, I, I'll use the same argument I've, I've told you a million times. I mean, look at what we're doing today. We're off-roading, we're driving multiple thousand pound vehicles, all this stuff, and we're using how much of our brain power? If Sasquatch is out there, and it's as smart as we think it is, and it's using even that much power, not trying to be found in a billion acres of woods, of course it exists. Uh, my theory is Sasquatch um, pulled the Elon Musk and then flew to the moon. I, I consider your answer to be a dodge. Yeah, it was, it was. So, yeah, I think he's out there. I think he's out there. Or she. That's that's very inclusive of you, Chris. Thank you. you poor <laughs> we might have a spot up ahead. After some side quests, we found the most spectacular campsite for the entire trip. It was time to set up camp, enjoy some beers, and get back to our silly Wobder challenges. We're all hanging out. Oh no, I thought I thought I was gonna go first. Oh no, you're not going first. I wanna go first. I thought we could all do something together. Okay, I'm listening. <laughs> row, row, 
row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Row, row, row oh, your boat ah. gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Row, row, so row I declare your boat. A challenge. <laughs> not the singing is at all. No, no, you gotta get like, you no, have we're to, not. Let, we're you stopping. have to let him die. So this challenge is gonna be the lights before lockers challenge. <laughs> throw it, throw you it. You have nothing but a bunch of stuff strapped on your vehicle, but where's the count? So let's see who has the most lockers and the most lights. Oh, done. Let's go. Jason, are you let's ready? Let's go. Come on. Gently. You down can join too. Tree. You can at least halfway join. Stop it, Jason. Let's go. <laughs> so how many lights and how many lockers do you have? I wish I had an adventure hat. Uh, <laughs> so I have two sets of off-road lights. Would you guys like to be blinded by them? Go ahead and present them for us. Alright. Light! Oh. <laughs> so he doesn't have them when he needs them. These don't Ow! Okay, okay. We don't okay. need any of that. I, I, no flashing lights. Yeah. How many lockers does a Tacoma have? It's got a rear locker. I have multi-terrain select. And if you watch any of the prom promotional stuff for the fourth gen Tacoma, a track is pretty much a front locker. In sure. the in the spirit of this challenge, he is fulfilling the meme of lights before lockers. So the problem is it's the meme and you do lose. So now we're gonna go to the real trucks. All right, Chris, I know the, the bison's not lacking in a certain category like other vehicles. But what, does it, please, dude. <laughs> but what does it have for lights? But if you want to step in front, I'd be happy to uh, show you. Bam! Ah, so, it's too much. It's, it's, it's really not that bad compared to... Tacoma has better lights. But, like front and rear lockers, the bison also has front and rear lights. So if you guys wouldn't mind heading to the back. No. Ah, it's so amber. Before, before we get to the Jeep, I do want Jason to repeat what he told me on the trail earlier today about these lights in particular. Jason. <laughs> you guys didn't see Row or Your Boat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nate, we've seen the Bison. We've seen Jason's Tacoma. What do you got for us? So let me show you what I have. I have fog lights, unlike you with your amber lights. I have 7,000 series lights, which are the big round lights in the, seven, in the center of the grill. And I also have a 20 inch Baja Designs light bar. Oh, oh God, golly, geez. Gee, gee whiz. That's a lot. Ow, gosh dang it. <laughs> the winner of the uh, Lights Before Lockers challenge is Nate. Yes. Sc hey, screw screw Nate. you, Nate. So now I have won both the... You, you won, won half the camp chair. Half the camp chair challenge. And uh, Chris are tied for the, the ongoing challenge of who has the least common vehicle on the trail. And, uh, and you won the light thing. You, you have one and a half points. Good job, <laughs> Nate. Thanks. I have two points. No. I'm probably not going to win anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning everyone, it's the final morning of our trip and we're gonna have a final camp chat. Oh, no, yeah, not... <laughs> so how about a camp teardown challenge of who can pack up their tents, put away their sleep bag, and whatever cot like sleeping mat system they have. Yeah, let's do it. Three, two, one, go! You're failing, Nate, you're failing. I like the fart noise. Go! I just, I, you guys were moving way too fast. I don't want to do any of that. Ah! <laughs> we're in the way. Minute 27. Ah! Oh, crash bag. Other bag. bag. Three minutes, three. These are pretty cool. Where do those go? These are add-ons. These go under my uh, four-inch mattress. Seven minutes, seven seconds. Ah! Ah! Hey, pull it down. Back it in just a little bit. Done. 9.30. Oh, I, I don't. I'll back up and throw it around. It's close. <laughs> so much. Done. 7.23 and 35 one hundreds. And we're done. What time? 1.35. <laughs> I hate Chris.
We made our way from our side adventure campsite back to the BDR to finish out section four. All that remained was the descent from Slide Ridge down to Chelan, Washington. Our challenges were down to the wire with Nate and Chris both with one and a half points, myself with two, and only a few more chances remaining. We don't see a Colorado or a Jeep on this such a section of road. Technically, Chris and I are gonna tie on that challenge. We'll be two, two, and two. This isn't staged at all. I don't know how it kind of worked out to be this way. <laughs> Might as well leave it a little better than we found it. <laughs> well, how much, uh, how much more trail do we have before we're at uh, the end of section four? Not very much, like uh, trail mileage, I don't know, a mile or two. We just hit pavement, so it's time to wrap up the challenges of this trip. Nate, we have to, we have a conclusion for the uh, least common vehicle on the trail challenge. It's finally a tie. It's uh, <laughs> one Jeep, one Colorado, and something like a dozen or something. Four, <laughs> just <dozen>. four. <laughs> so it all comes down to the Air Up challenge. So we're gonna be doing a Le Mans start. So this is kind of an apples to oranges kind of challenge, but we have different sized tires and all, all of us have different ways of airing up our tires. Apples, so. oranges, mangoes. What, but each Apples, person orange. has to at least air up to the 33 30, PSI 33, manufacturer 34. recommended specs. Count us down. Three, two, one, go. on telling me my hood is open, which is very helpful. I'm by the deficit over here. Biggest tire, same tire pressure went down to. Yeah. What happened? Waiting for the truck to honk. They're oh. big tires. They are big tires. Yeah. I hope his is like thermal barrier, like brakes or something. Tells him he has to go to the next one. Oh, it's close. Oh, Nate's ahead of you just a little bit. What? I turned this one off. Hey, don't shoot the light. You don't really need to arm up fast. I mean, it's. All right, last start. Ah, oh, freaking jam. I'm on the last tire now. Are you? You last tire. Come on, come on. So I'm watching it from the passenger side, so this way I can unplug it quicker. I inflated two of the tires. That's not my fault. That's your Toyota tire pressure. I know, it sucks. I know it sucks. Turn it right now. Yes! 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 In five days, we had successfully completed sections one, two, three, and four of the Washington Backcountry Discovery Route, but had run out of time. As we gorged on pizza, we had no idea how long we'd have to wait to finish the journey. But fortune would smile on us. Three short weeks later, we met again at the same pizza joint in Chelan, Washington to finish what we started. All right, we're about ready to hit the trail of the Washington Backcountry Discovery Route again, but it is three weeks later. It is now about the middle of October, so weather is a factor. Will we find snow, rain, uh, yetis? We're gonna find out. Uh, we lost a guy. We'll pour one out for Michael. On <laughs> he's super, he's super dead. He's super dead to us anyway. Dead to us. <laughs> we have new Michael. We do. We have new Michael. We have Canadian Michael. 
Hello, Canadian hey. Michael. <laughs> How's it going, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. And to fill in as passenger and B-roll and cameraman extraordinaire. Uh, in my truck, because I have to have somebody to talk to. My buddy, Justin. Hello, Justin. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Welcome to this uh, <laughs> ragtag group of misfits. Good luck. Yeah, oh, you want to wanna give a quick tour of your bison? Really? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's do it. All right. 2021 Bison uh, with every AEV enhancement that they offer. Uh, come up winch, uh, smart cap, Prinsu rack, and most of the install videos. Uh, thanks to yours truly. Hey. Aww. Thank you. Section 5 of the Wabder is 103 miles long, connecting Chelan to Con Canulli, Washington. After saying goodbye to beautiful Lake Chelan, the route gains elevation quickly to the 5,867-foot summit of Cooper Mountain. From there, the trail stays consistently beautiful, including other mountain peaks and even a ghost town. Let's roll! Adventure! Adventure! Should I be in four low? Four low and lockers. Both lockers too, right, Jason? Quiet. So the first peak we're headed to is Copper Mountain. Be, uh, I think 5,800 feet elevation. Yeah, I think the sign back there said like 20 miles or around basically gets to the top of that one. We'll be there in 20 minutes if the road stays like this. Kind of did some uh, YouTube uh, recon before this trip and this will be some interesting sections. I think we'll have some good overlooks uh, throughout this basically every day. Well good because all of my drone batteries are fully charged. Well, that sounds like a horrible thing. We'll have to burn those down. Burn them down. Mike, I like how different your uh, bison is set up from Chris's. They're both both awesome and uh, but different styles. I like it. Yeah, uh, I noticed that uh, every one of these is, is unique. Each one of these vehicles are very different. They're very different setups too for uh, camping. Yes, uh, if we have crappy weather, which hopefully we don't, uh, the, the the roof tenters will uh, reign supreme. Hey man, better laugh at us as we sleep on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were spoiled by the weather on the first part of the trip, so I think we need like it has to match. Otherwise, it's just it's not right. <laughs> Continuity is important. <laughs> well, I don't think you could ask for a more beautiful October day than this. Yeah, section uh, five is starting off good. With ominous weather rolling in, it was time to stop looking super adventurous and put down some trail miles to our intended campsite. The weather has definitely shifted a bit. Uh, it's you know this is this is going uh, over landing in October for you. Just remember, guys, there is a giant cliff next to us. Just because of the fog, we can't see it. Doesn't mean it's not there. There's Mike. Mike and Nate are going kind of fast. Those cheap wranglers are quick like a bunny rabbit. I was just saying that y'all are y'all are speedy. You did it right at this one. Roger. Now there's not very much, but I don't know if you guys kind of can notice from the camera up there. We've got a little bit of snow. Oh, here we go. <laughs> ah, bike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like Fox Peak is right ahead of us. Yeah, it looks like uh, we want to hit it. We have to take that road to her right. I don't think it's going to do us anything good. Probably 
probably just want to make our distance and then camp somewhere lower. <laughs> right? Much, much lower. Hello. 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 How are we doing, guy, Guide Man? We're doing way too well. Adventure Man. Adventure Nate. It's Adventure Nate. Adventure Nate. So we're here. You can see a little Jeep. Uh huh. That's, uh -huh. that's us. Okay. This is like where we were. This is where we're going for fuel. Okay. But we want to find somewhere to camp somewhere in this section before we hit that hard ball once sure. again. Sure. Since we only had two sections to cover on this trip, we decided to take our sweet time and find camp a little early. No bison tonight. No bison? Prime oh. rib what? burgers tonight. What? I love you guys. Our campsite comes with a pretty awesome white noise machine. <laughs> I suppose one of us could have done that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Ah. Oh. You just gotta line up the. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Nate. Oh. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Don't put it at the fire. I uh, I did. Oh, ouch. Yeah. 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 It's You're not monocular, right? It's not good for it. Night Perfect. sleep report, a very, very cheap USB heater pad, and one of these just to get this, the tent warm at the beginning, and that's it. And uh, I slept like I was a baby in my mother's arms. I slept better than I usually sleep at home. Should I say that? Should I say it was? And bourbon. <laughs> and also, also. <laughs> the section five route includes a short stint along Highway 20. This is the last good opportunity to top off your fuel and grab supplies in either Carlton or Twisp, Washington. So we did both. We fueled up and grabbed supplies at the famous Carlton General Store and met possibly the world's friendliest dog. So cute. Hello, sir. Then it was on to Twisp to grab an amazing breakfast at El Valle, a Mexican restaurant that offers traditional American breakfast options in the morning. Bam. Come it's on. gonna be on the Come camera. On. This is so on. weird. Come on. I can't oh, get a good spike. Nice. There you go. I'm good. Time to get back on the BDR to conquer section five. We didn't know it yet, but it was going to be a very exciting day. So a cool thing happened in between uh, the last leg of the trip and this trip is that each of us have done something kind of cool mm -hmm. to each of our trucks. So we're gonna do a little show and tell and Nate goes first. The biggest thing of the last trip was the dust. So the dust was the biggest player I think we all had problems with. So one of the first things that I wanted to do uh, for actually quite a while now, but the last trip kind of spurred it, make it happen quicker, was the light bar down low. I changed out the lenses to amber to get a little bit more uh, dust and uh, low light kind of visibility because of it. Yeah. The other big dust related thing that I changed on the vehicle, I wanted to do this also since I bought the vehicle, was put a snorkel on it. When you're off road, a lot more dust is in this area than it is up here. So getting the cold air into up higher gives yep. you better, uh, cleaner air. You're gonna get your air filtered less dirty over time. All right, Jace, you're up next. What do you got? Well, I got some constructive criticism that because I chose a vehicle that is a bit earth toned in dark green and tan, that I'm a little hard to see when it's dusty outside. So I literally got this done like the day before we left. Come, it's in the back, it's in the back. Ladies and gentlemen, the Tacoma has a chase light. Thank the maker. <laughs> The, uh, this bumper is kind of hard to mount lights into because we have sensors here, 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 and here. What I did is I did some research and this light from Dow Dynamics, it's a, a two inch pod light that really closely matches the uh, trailer wiring, at least the shape. So it actually looks kind of symmetrical. So I flush mounted this and wired up a, uh, a switch. Mine is not dust related. There are so many times I can't tell you, we were talking back and forth and you guys would ask me a question <laughs> and I would answer on my lovely radio. And, and all we'd hear was like, doo, 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 doo. Can't hear you again, Chris. Sorry. <laughs> so I fixed that. Uh, I ended up, I had a defective radio. Uh, Midland was kind enough to send me out a full replacement, which is very cool. But while I was at it, I did relocate oh, my oh. antenna. It looks cool. So we used to have a ghost antenna mounted up there. Yep. We brought it to the back. Oh, -ho. and this is their new kind of bull bar mount. I think it's like a two, nee, two and a half nee. foot antenna. Yep. Nee, 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 nee. Routed all the wiring, have a really cool little, uh, uh, mount from Rego Fabrication, uh, and 
Thankfully, it has worked phenomenally so far this trip. You all can hear me. I we can hear him. I repeat myself. It's incredible. It's incredible. So yeah, that's my mod. <laughs> oh. All right, we're getting wild here. <laughs> what do you have to? Right, yeah, this is why we can't have nice things. Is there any uh, obstacles or treacherous stuff ahead of us for today, or pretty light? So this is another section of trail that uh, none of us have ran before, so I'm not sure exactly what to expect. Uh, one of the cool things that we'll be doing today is going to the Ruby site. It's an old uh, ghost town that's uh, pretty exciting to go check out. I'm trying not to set my expectations too high. To where we are now and where we're headed, we call Canadian Banana Belt because of the fruit growing region and then it's very dry and arid. So this is this is the beginning of it as we continue north. Very similar terrain. I dig section five. It's very, very chill, but it's uh it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm 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 loving today. It's just good. It's very, very good. Big boy! Ha! Yeah. Wow! Ah! <laughs> Yeah, look at that. He's gonna pick us up and chop us in half. I was like, what the hell are you opening my grandpa for? Ho ho! Windows up? <laughs> that looked awesome, dude. I'm glad I was recording that. <laughs> I think we have probably more 20 miles to do. Hopefully that's correct to get to the Ruby campsite, so all right, gents, just to recap, I was pulled over for a second. Uh, my truck just threw a check engine light. I don't know if it was playing in the puddles too much or what's going on. All the temps, pressures, everything looks fine. Uh, but let's find out for sure. 10 mil, I don't have one immediately on me. Well, we checked it, still there. It's still, the engine's still there. <laughs> we did let's it. go. Will he make it through section six? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start it up again, see if it uh, comes back. Oh, I probably have to do my window thing. Do I have to do my window thing? Yeah, I do. Open, then close driver window. Is this so it doesn't pinch you or something? I have no idea. There, it goes away. It's gone? Uh, it's gone. Yep. There we go. Chevy's. Fixed it. Yeah. We fixed it. And that's how you fix a Chevy. Now we hope and pray. <laughs> Section five had been amazing, except for this. I sense, uh, uh, it's 18 years old. Oh, I said she just stepped in a giant pile of shit. Oh! oh, no! Also, we had been traveling just too darn fast. Nate remedied the situation by finding us a pretty ridiculous side quest. Our vehicle's paint would never look the same. We got uh, 1.6 miles to some uh, cool stuff, so uh, it gets something, something mine. Ooh, a mine. Oh, this looks fun. I'm gonna climb up it first and take a look at it. It looks a little on, off camber, kind of rocky, so let me just scout it first. Well, this is the China Wall Loop to the Arlington Mine Site. All right, Godspeed, Nate. Godspeed. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. They were saying he wanted to scout it just yeah. in case. Okay, you guys should be able to make it. I would suggest doing one at a time and then uh, let the guy behind you know when you make it. All right, I'm headed up. I am clear. Not too bad, guys. That was fun. The Arlington mine site is on the map and has a few paths to reach it. If you attempt the same path as us, be aware that the trail is very tight and overgrown. Also, there are washouts to contend with. You've been warned. Off the beaten path a little bit. This is called a China Wall, China Wall of Loop Loop in the map. Loop Loop. This is starting to look like my last few weekends at home in the Alpine. Bit steep here. Mm-hmm. Woo! That was fun. 
more cows. We gotta tell them to move out of the way. Right? Right, Nate? <laughs> I don't like the off-camber stuff. I don't like it. No, I don't. 15 degree off-camber is always exhilarating. Mm -hmm. Especially with the tent seven feet in the air. Yeah. You doing good, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody doesn't like heights. Oh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be uncomfortable sometimes. It's part of the, it's part of the experience. What is this? What's up, Nate? Hey, you don't want to take a look at this? Oh boy. That's definitely a little sketchy. Oh, that put... that right there and right here. Well, I'm not super worried about this. This was throwing off camber. So that spot, that's where it was actually washed out and someone put logs and rocks into it. Right. So I'm gonna try to put a front tire on it and see what happens. Okay. The anticipation is killing me. Oh, sorry. So up ahead here, there's a really narrow spot next to this like cliff wall. Jason's gonna spot me through it. And he's gonna videotape it because actually this is a narrow, narrow spot. Yeah, you're okay. Straight. You're good. You're not on the rocks. You're still in the dirt. You can go passenger. There you go. More passenger. There you go. You're through. Good. Ooh, that's close. <laughs> just just do what Nate says. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang oh. on just a second. You're good. You're good. You're good. I'll go up th I'll go up there and park behind you. Yep. Now we got a, a heavy, bi heavier bison. Much heavier. And then we got a really, really heavy bison <laughs> at the tail. So this might not seem necessary for all of you, but we're trying to save this because yeah. we have a 7,000 pound bison come across as a tail vehicle. And I think we're on the max track now. Mm -hmm. Feels like it. <laughs> Last but not least. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, we're all through. And now we're all through. There we go. I think that's the first time that one was oh, used. I got a little. Oh, a little bit. A little rocks kind of ate it a little bit. Ah, we'll that's right off. I feel so gosh darn alive. Do we have more cows? Look at all them cows. High elevation beef. What are you sassy cows up to? Here comes some scratches. Oh man. Whatever. I mean flipping, whatever. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Whoa! Like uh, Sarge is being initiated into a oh. fraternity. How you doing, Chris? Just pushing through, buddy. Rub a dub dub, right, Chris? <laughs> so let's uh, explore this. All right, let's go up, clear the road. Get up there, Chase. Can I just go through there? You want to come up? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Toyota guys. Can you make it through that? Uh, yeah, I made it through it. Oh, you made it through it, can I make it through it? <laughs> oh, of course, the Toyota, I can do anything. But the Toyota. <laughs> my, my nerves are a bit nerve-wracked, <laughs> so... Jason, you've got this. Move it! <laughs> a little stressed out, but I don't know why you're interviewing me, but how was it for you? It's fine, it's not a big deal to me. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> good. Okay. The mine itself was fine, but the journey to it was a highlight of the entire Wobder adventure. Yeah, so we, oh what man. We got here is an inline. Good as gold. <laughs> what is it? The funny thing is, this thing doesn't have a check engine line on it. 
<laughs> With daylight running low, we made our way along a more established trail back to the BDR to check out the Ruby Ghost Town and to find camp. Ready for some history? Some history, get right. yourself some learnings. <laughs> Here we go, Chris. You want me to read it? I want you to read it. All right. Queen City of the Okanagan County Silverboom, Ruby was born in the spring of 1886. Main Street, following this county road, was 60 feet wide. Both sides were solidly lined with business places for one quarter of a mile. Cabins and shacks clung to the hillsides. Ruby rocked when miners <laughs> poured in from the first stop. <laughs> The Arlington, 4th of July, and other notable mines and ridges to the west. With whiskey, a dollar a quart. Hey yo! Hey yo! <laughs> no one went thirsty. Huh? Only a few stone foundations remain of what was once the most famous mining camp in the Northwest. Wow. Good job, Chris. Thanks. Ruby, unfortunately, was a dud and had no place to camp. We made our way into Con Canoli, Washington, completing Section 5, and found camp technically a few miles into Section 6. Well, it's 6.22 p.m. We just set up camp. Uh, another awesome campsite. This one is a le like an actual campsite. We're sorry, we're not, we're not always super awesome, but it's a great spot. Looks like a calendar here, and uh, I'm gonna eat tacos and drink beer. If so, I want to show that French here. Yeah, it's on fire now. Off deep woods, or deep woods. There you go, right Chris? Not just for bugs. <laughs> Put that on your skin, it's good for you. <laughs> Our journey along the Washington BDR had only one leg remaining, Section 6. At only 66 miles long, Section 6 connects Con Canoli, Washington to the Canadian border. While short, the trail doesn't disappoint as you travel to the highest elevation on the entire Wabder over Lone Frank Pass. After that, the route enters Loomis State Park and up Skull and Crossbones Road, where a historic homestead still stands, sort of. Then it's down into a beautiful valley where the adventure quickly concludes. A glorious campsite, boys. Uh, what's the next peak we're headed to? We're going to Lone Frank Pass first. Well, it has been an epic trip. Every day is different, so I'm excited to see what today brings. I would say depending on the time of year you're doing this, a stock truck can probably do it with just a good set of tires. Obviously, you're going to want recovery gear and to go with some friends to make sure you don't get uh, stuck out here uh, alone. So uh, currently, uh, we're approaching Lone Frank Pass and we just crested 6,700 feet elevation uh, and we're still climbing a bit. So this is actually a new uh, high for us in uh, Washington on the BDR. I am very glad I kept my uh, long chons on. You know, like I thought about bringing lawn johns, but I left it at home. But the uh, heated seat is really coming in handy no. right now. That's great. I'm happy for you. <laughs> uh, but, but are your hands warmed as well? Because I mean, you wouldn't want to have to wear gloves. Oh no, yeah, like my, my hands are perfectly warm with uh, this heated steering wheel. Yeah, I feel like we all got that pretty well covered, right? Right, Mike, you got that covered. Mm -hmm. We're good. No, every good overlander has to have a heated seat and a heated. <laughs> well, we just hit 6,800 feet right at that high point there. And then there's a nice sign that says avalanche warning. I don't think we have enough snow on the ground to worry about an avalanche today. Just, uh, I know it's foggy, but this still is a 400 foot drop off to our right, so uh, pay attention. Make sure you have good grip on the steering wheel. The hands are cold, the turn your heat steering wheel makes you feel better. Roger. Friends like you who needs enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Camera's off. Camera's off. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, welcome everyone to the Skull and Crossbones Ranch. <laughs> Most haunted part of this whole journey. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's go check it out. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Ah, haunted poop. Haunted poop. Haunted poop. So one of the cool things you can tell about old cabins is like when they're built, like I can guarantee this cabin was built over two years ago. <laughs> you can tell by the wood. Really? 
Wow. Comment below. <laughs> Comment below if you think this cabin is older than two years. This cabin was murdered by this log. Wild uh, forest cows approach. What are you doing, Mr. Cow? What are you doing? I mean, Miss Cow, sorry. If this was any more uh, PNW, we'd have uh, Sasquatch drinking a Rainier off to the side. Listen, let's get a costume and a beer and we can arrange that. <laughs> <laughs> you gosh darn cows! That's a big old fatty cow. Look at that big bastard. It'll be okay, cows. Come on, Nate. Hurt that cattle. Yeah, Nate. Ha! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 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 that might to get the bullpine out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Section six was a ton of fun, but too short. We could have wrapped up the journey, but decided to make camp one last time and finish the adventure the next morning. It's like Hades, look at that. Look at this, Chris. Did you see this fire? It's ridiculous. It's too much. It's too much. Alright guys, just looking at the map, it looks like we just got a downhill section that we gotta do to get back down to the road and then, uh, oh yeah, you can see the town of Lemus from here. So our journey is almost complete? Almost complete. And uh, from what I look on the map, that uh, as soon as we get to the bottom of this, we will uh, be getting onto the pavement. So uh, we'll try to find a little spot to build pull off and air up our tires because I think it's going to be highway from here. And then we get to uh, escort our Canadian friend all the way to the border. Hey, I can't thank you guys enough for inviting me on your adventure and making sure I get home safely. It was a blast, man. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, great, great adventure, awesome vehicles, but better people, if you ask me. Mike, you've made a late addition to your truck. I have. Uh, this will guarantee me entry back into my home country after adventuring <laughs> in the U.S., so, so it, it's, it's a given. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> my advice to everyone, do stuff like this. Get a group of friends together. Bring what you have. You don't have to have the fanciest vehicles in the world. I'm rolling uh, 32s with all these guys in 35s and 37s, and I'm able to keep up. It warms my heart. It warms my heart to be with people like this, hang out with them, get to learn things from them. I'm uh, I am a very fortunate, blessed dude to have friends like this and be able to do stuff like this because, because friends help you get through the, the harder times in life. Um, they support you, uh, and sometimes when needed, they just distract you. And Chris keeps throwing rocks at me! <laughs> you threw another rock at me, dude! <laughs> Final thoughts, guys? So Go this home. is the end. We have now finally yeah. brought Mike back to the border where he Canada's will be. That. Canada's that hay back there. Canada hay. <laughs> Amazing stuff. It was a yeah. really good trip, really good trip. Nate? I was always kind of surprised. It seems like every section, like you, it just got better starting from section one all the way to section six. So everything had a nice little special way of making it interesting. My thoughts, guys, get out there, do stuff like this with your friends. Doesn't matter what trucks you have, just get out there. It makes, makes all, all of me happy. So it's just so awesome. Thank you all very much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless and don't forget to do it yourself. Wait, what? Which what? one should we do next? Idaho. Idaho? Idaho. Idaho. Comment Idaho. below. Comment below what we Idaho. should do next, but it's going to be Idaho probably. Uh, well, that's a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. Right. Woo! <laughs>Come to Jason explain things. Come adventure. Come along. Okay. As we. Oh shoot. Oh yeah. Oh, don't you know? Why I told you, you I had a bag. Did you bring a body bag? You got to be ready. Shortest? Oh Nate. You got to be ready. This is a Nate size body bag. <laughs> I'm leaving you on this track. <laughs> oh, how could you?
On the drive in here, we had a we had a long, hard look at the back of your soft topper, and uh -huh. we have decided that it looks like a wrinkly nut sack. You'll never no. see it the same I'm not going to look at it. <laughs> oh. Oh. One cheek sneak? Yeah, it's actually a magical thing. What is it? What is it? What you do? Oh, no way. <laughs> oh! <laughs> they were supposed to be turkeys. I don't think just the one driving a Toyota. So what happened at this field that there there is now a new sign that says no authorized <laughs> people beyond the sign? <laughs> it's what? just a sign that somebody probably put up just because they felt like they needed to. I couldn't tell you why. <laughs> you, Chris! Oh! Hi guys, Nate here with Nate Lifestyle. Dun 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 dun! Crashed. Oh, <laughs> Where? How did you keep this so cold on the trail all day? A set power sent me that fridge. Set power? Say, that's swell. Silly chick. Silly. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Hey. No, don't talk. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna hug you. Come here. We're adventurous! <laughs> oh, we're super adventurous! <laughs> ready to roll and rock all day long. Sweet Susie. <laughs> There's a reference no one will get. <laughs> I rock and roll all day long, sweet Susie. Well, uh, as you guys might have saw at the... Er, I got it. I got <laughs> no, no, come on. <laughs> Hello, mountain cow. The ghost was murdered on this very mattress. This one time at war, <laughs> Nate was saving the president. Yeah. He stepped on two landmines. Oh, 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 this is oh these are these yeah. are landmines. Oh, oh. He took his cues from the rigging industry. <laughs> we looked at the rigging industry, and we noticed a few things. <laughs> hey, did you take your cues from the rigging industry, bro? I just made your dinner, and now you're making fun of me. I just took your trash out. You're welcome. And are you still making fun of me? You do the dishes and still make fun of me. It's fine. I don't care. I don't care. I'll just leave. I don't care.